So my project is really designed to provide uh, a more complete picture of petroleum hydrocarbon toxicity to shallow water corals. Um, a lot of previous research in the area, and there has been quite a bit, um, was very inconsistent. So many different types of exposures, many different types of chemicals used, different species, different exposure metrics, and all of that variability in the methodology really produced effects ranging from no effect at all to complete mortality in the test corals. So there was a lot of conflicting, conflicting results, and uh, what we really wanted to do was sort of refine uh, methods, come up with a very uh, specific uh, protocol for testing sclerxidine corals, and uh, fill in some of the, the gaps in the data. So the overarching goal uh, of the data that we provide is really to, pro uh, to provide uh, a basis for more effective decision making should an oil spill impact a coral reef environment. Our findings so far have indicated that corals are more resilient to hydrocarbon exposure than previously thought. Uh, we have had some expected results and some not so expected results. So we're working with five species. One of those is the Atlantic staghorn coral, Acropora cervicornis. So this is listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. So that has some implications for um, its status in the wild and its protections in the wild. Um, we kind of knew from working from this coral in the past that it was gonna be one of the more sensitive ones, and that is absolutely what it has proven to be. So that was a kind of an expected result. Um, of the other species, I'm kind of surprised uh, by how resilient they have been to hydrocarbon exposure. So for example, the, um, uh, the massive star coral, uh, Sideroastria siderea, very prevalent throughout the Caribbean and the, the Western Atlantic. Uh, this is a tough coral, and it's impressed me with how tough it is. Yeah, well, I think in terms of science in general, uh, a better understanding of how aquatic contaminants like this impact corals really contributes uh, generally to our understanding of, of coral health and the status of coral health uh, throughout the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, everywhere really. Um, and that has some real implications, uh, you know, because these corals are more resilient than we thought they might be, at least in the laboratory. Um, the why of that uh, translates into some better understanding of how corals are affected by aquatic contaminants in general. And that may in turn lead to uh, a better understanding of how to manage coral reefs uh, to promote their resilience and, and their long-term long -term health. Uh, the real utility is what do you do in an oil spill? So let's say you have an oil spill and there's a coral reef. There's so many different response options. You know, there's, there's doing nothing, there's in-situ burning, there's the use of dispersants, which is not normally done in shallow water. There's a, a number of different things that you can do. Each one of those response options comes with a, a particular set of effects on all of, the, uh, all of the compartments of that environment, all of the environmental resources. Uh, you know, there's, it, there's no winners in an oil spill, really. But the goal is to do the least, to have the least amount of impact. So by understanding better how that oil spill and each response option will affect all of those resources, that helps you to make a decision about what to do. This project was really built on a, some previous work that we had done uh, there was a collaboration between my laboratory, uh, the oil spill response industry, industry itself, and government agencies like NOAA. And that collaboration really helped us to understand how to produce actionable science. And by actionable science, I mean data that directly can be used in fate and effects modeling and uh, oil spill trajectory, trajectory modeling those sort of, of forecasting tools. Um, and that's really important because that can be then directly used in NEBA, so Net Environmental Benefit Analysis, and SEMA, Spill Impact Mitigation Assessment, of what to do when there is an oil spill. You know, every oil spill is different, and you're, you know, we'll never have another Deepwater Horizon, 
the next oil spill will be completely different. So those activities, NEBA and SEMA, are really about planning for what to do during the next oil spill. And that's what my data helps to, helps to do. It helps to provide a basis for that more effective decision-making process.